Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwalbens Nest. I'm taking a break over the Easter weekend, so I've gathered five of my favorite looks for less for you to enjoy. And just to let you know, some of them are when I first started YouTube, so the quality of the video and the audio might not be as good as you're used to. But I sure hope that won't stop you from watching. I found this sweet little post lantern that is resin, it's plastic, and it's a solar lantern. Check out that price for $190. And in Canada, that would be probably almost $240 because of the exchange rate. Keep watching to see how I recreate this item for way less. These are the items that I'm going to use to create this lantern. The little white box with the handle at the back and the candlestick were thrifted items. And then I was scrounged around the house to see what other items I could find. And I'm using this fence post cap. And this lantern is from Ikea, which I have had probably for at least three years now. I'm going to start by giving the candlestick one coat of linen white chalk paint. If you take a look at the candlestick, some of the texture on it is really neat and I want it to be able to distress it later. So I'm only going to give it one coat because I want to have some of this um, texture and color shining through. The fence post cap is going to be used underneath the lantern as a base, but it's really rough so I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and smooth down some of the rough edges and then I'll give it a coat of paint as well. Prepping wood surfaces is really important and after I'm done sanding I always take a rag and wipe down all the edges that I've sanded and also including my workspace just to get rid of any dust so it doesn't interfere with the paint process. The cap is going to get one good coat of chalk paint and I'm going to make sure I get in all of the little cracks and crevices. This little box is a candle holder and it's got um, sort of a lantern look to it but I'm not going to need the handle so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and I'm also then going to prep this for painting. It's kind of dirty. I haven't cleaned it yet so I'm just taking a uh, Lysol wipe and just going around and getting all the as much dirt and grime off of it as I can. It has this black candle holder that has a little spike in it to actually fix your candle in, but I don't need it, so I just gave it a good tug and it popped out. I just let it dry to make sure there wasn't any moisture on it, and then I'm painting it with one coat of the chalk paint. It's already white, so I just really want to freshen it up. As I was painting this, I realized that I still had the price tag on the bottom of this box. This one was $2.99 at a thrift store. The candlestick was actually a reduced price sale at Pier 1, so that was $10. And the lantern from Ikea is $7.99. The fence post cap was left over from when we built the fence. The item that I showed you at the beginning that I found online wasn't distressed at all because it was made of resin, which is a type of plastic. But I love distressed things farmhouse style so of course I'm going to go ahead and grab some 80 grit sandpaper and sand the box so some of the wood shows through and I'm also going to sand some of the candlestick because I want some of that shine and texture to show through. The only prep that the lantern needs is a good wipe down and I'm going to remove the little handle at the top. With the lantern I want to give it a little bit of an enamel look and I know that was also not part of the original item but I want to just make this my own and that's exactly what this challenge is all about. It's a look for less but you also want it to fit into your home decor. This tiny little candlestick I painted white I'm going to use that as a little accessory on top of the lantern. Once I started assembling the lantern, I realized that I needed some more weight down at the bottom. So I'm just going to cut some pieces of foam core board, pop them inside the box, and then fill the box with something that will weight it down. 
the fun thing about doing DIYs like this is you can get pretty creative. So I needed something to weigh down this box and I didn't have enough of the rocks. So I would decided to grab this bag of yellow split peas that I haven't used and it's been sitting there waiting to be soup, but it's gonna turn into a wait for this lantern instead. Now it's time to assemble the lantern. And you might've been wondering why I'm using this fence post cap, but I didn't want the lantern bottom to be completely straight across. I wanted to have a little bit of an angle. So I'm just gonna hot glue the fence post cap to the bottom of the lantern. You might be wondering why I'm not using anything more permanent than hot glue, but I tend to take my projects apart. So with hot glue, I'll have the ability to just pop these pieces apart if I want to. When I did this look for less, it was Christmas time. So it does have a little bit of Christmas embellishment, but three years later, it's still all in one piece. I left it exactly the way it is because I love it. I found this pair of lanterns on overstock.ca and for the two of them it was $136. I created mine for less than $8. Here's how I did it. What I'm doing here is starting some screws into the back of the largest block that I have. This is going to be used as a stabilizer for the post. I'll be placing the lantern post inside the pot. I'm just going to drill the the screw down far enough so I see the tip of it at the bottom. My apologies for this next part. I actually don't know what happened to the footage, but you can see here that I screwed four screws into the post from the bottom up. Now it's time to add the bracket onto the post and I'm using two black screws and my cordless drill and I'm just going to screw those in. So this is what my project looks like so far with the post and the bracket screwed on. I've got everything assembled, so now it's time to paint. The first thing I'm doing here is just cleaning off the planter because it's in pretty rough shape from being outside for a few years. I'm using Rust-Oleum flat black paint to give this one good coat and then I'll be using the hammered metal finish also in black to give it the look of metal. I flipped it around and I'm starting to paint the top part and I'm just gonna go around the edges and on the inside of the pot I'm gonna just go down to that first lip because you won't really see too much more of that once I fill up the pot. While the pot dries, I'm going to paint the post and the bracket. The coat of black spray paint is dry, so I'm going to now use this hammered metal finish from Tremclad in the color of black and do a nice coat all over the pot and all over the post and the bracket. This piece of scrap wood I'm going to use as the base of the lantern because I'll be able to use one of the holes of the brackets to actually screw this in. So I'll, right now I'm just giving it a good sanding because I do want to paint this black as well. Now I'm going to just place the glued lantern on the piece of wood on top of the bracket and there is a screw hole on the bracket right on at the front portion that I'm going to use to just screw the piece of wood on and hold it in place. Before I use the screw into the wood, I'm gonna use some hot glue just so the piece of wood will be steady and I won't have to worry about hanging onto it while I work with the screwdriver. 
here's the lantern all assembled and right now it's just sitting in the pot so my next step is to actually fill the pot and make the lantern more sturdy now I'm going to take some river rocks that I used in a previous project and that I no longer use and I'm gonna pour those into the bottom of the pot to keep the wood base stable I took some dirt from another pot and filled it up a little bit more so I'd be able to put some live plants in here. But since it's a little still fresh outside, I'm going to be using some artificial ones for now. range check this out 224 bucks for a topiary tree I don't think so I picked up this round styrofoam ball at my local Dollarama store and it was 350 it's about 10 inches in diameter I believe what I need to do with it is poke a hole through the center for my dowel which is essentially going to become the trunk of the tree what I'm using to poke the hole is the inside of a rolling pin. So I've had some of these rolling pins from the dollar store for a while and I just unscrewed it and used this to just jam right into the center and it popped out the other end and I was able to just make the hole a, quite a bit bigger so the dowel would fit through. I have these leftover greenery leaves from flowers that I just use the florals for and not the greenery. I always keep the leaves and I'm just going to use some hot glue and cover the styrofoam ball completely. So far I've spent $3.50 on this project. I'm now going to start taking some of these topiary balls and cutting them apart. I'm going to leave that net or that form. I'm just going to cut them in pieces and then hot glue it onto the leaves. I had these topiary balls from a garden party that I hosted a couple of years ago for my son. It was after his wedding and so I could probably get away with saying that I didn't spend anything extra on this. I had these in my stash but if you wanted to count them they would be $12 because I used four and they were $3 each. I think I'm going to say that they were part of my stash and they didn't really cost me anything specific to this project. Now that I've got the ball completely covered, it's actually looking really cool. I'm going to go ahead and push the dowel all the way through to the other side. So with the larger topiary ball done and ready to go, I need to add his little partner for the top. So this topiary ball came from Ikea. I have also had this probably for at least three years maybe. I bought quite a few of them. I don't get to Ikea very often because it's about an hour's drive from my house. So when I do go there, I tend to buy up a whole bunch of things at the same time. So what I'm doing is just trimming out some of the plastic because I need somewhere to fit the dowel in. I ended up trying with scissors and then my craft knife and of course I had to just go and use my snips. That's what I should have used in the first place to get this job done a little bit quicker. This part proved to be a little bit tricky. I did put some hot glue on the end of the dowel, but I didn't end up putting enough on. I thought that would be enough just to hold it in place. 
I had to add a little bit more hot glue once it was in there and I actually had to then just stand there for almost five minutes and hold the topiary ball in place until the hot glue was dry. I've had this little accordion style garden trellis since last year in the summer I think I purchased it at the dollar store and it was $2.50 and I have been using these pieces of wood all over the place um, some of my Christmas projects some of my fall projects anyhow they're just held together by these little nails so it is a little bit of a struggle to get them apart without breaking them but what I'm going to do is start hot gluing them onto the dowel and make it look like the trunk of a tree I'm using the longer ones underneath the large topiary ball and then I'll use some of the smaller ones in between the two towards the top. And hot glue with this was a little tricky but I just had to hold everything in place until it dried. Some of these branches or these sticks aren't 100% straight, they were a little bent so I had to just take my time and make sure it was done right. I purposely left some gaps in between because I wanted to use all of the long sticks and then just fill in some of the gaps with the shorter sticks and some of the pieces. And I did end up trimming them to make them fit. For the pot I decided to use this old galvanized bucket that came from our cottage there's a whole bunch of them there and this one had a nice little brick down in the bottom of it and I thought it was perfect because it has a hole down the center exactly the same size as the tree and it will fit in there just perfect. It was a little wobbly, so I knew I needed to have some extra support in there. I wasn't going to use hot glue because I didn't think that any type of glue would work really well. With things being the way they are, I wasn't able to go out and get some stones or some filler, so I'm using newspaper. And I'm gonna go ahead and crumple up some newspaper and just fill it up as much as I can. And then I've found these two other small little cement blocks that I'm going to use to support the tree itself. Next, I did need something that I could put on the top so you wouldn't be able to see just newspaper and these concrete blocks. So I took my craft paper, I've got a huge roll of it, and I started to crumple that up and put it in just to kind of mimic, I guess, some sand or just to give it a little bit of more natural texture. The final step was just to camouflage the craft paper a little bit and I had just enough Spanish moss or green moss left over so I just kind of broke it up and scattered it along and it just kind of fell into some of the grooves and it actually turned out pretty good. Once I'm able to get out to the stores again though I will probably replace the moss or I might just grab some stones and put some stones on top just to hold all the paper in place. I found this really beautiful cream window wood wall decor at Hobby Lobby for $34.99. I'm gonna make mine for free. Now the first thing you'll need is an old window and I actually had one but if you don't have an old window you could use some picture frames. There's lots of videos out on how to do that with picture frames. 
but I had this window left over from my cottage when we replaced the windows last year. So I decided I was just going to add some panes to it and make it look like the one from Hobby Lobby. You can get lots of old windows on Facebook Marketplace or the Habitat for Humanity Restore. You've just got to go check things out and see what you can find. What I'm doing here is figuring out how many pieces of wood I need and how long I need them to be. I used this white marker to mark the spots on the glass and I also marked the ruler so I would not forget what my measurement needed to be. I'm going to be using these hardwood stakes that were something that I had at home but originally they were purchased from my Dollarama store for $2.50 for four of them. And what I'm gonna do now is just mark off my length that I need and then I'll just cut them with my miter saw. With this little miter box, I usually clamp it onto my surface so it's a little easier to hang on to. And I'm also going to use these little clamps to clamp the wood to the miter box. It's just gonna make it so much easier for me to saw. Now, you're probably taking a look at this saw and going, that's not a miter saw. And you're absolutely right, it's not. I like to use a hacksaw when I'm doing small little projects like this because the blade is much more delicate and smaller and thinner. The saw that came with this is so big and the teeth are huge. So I usually end up making a mess of things. So that's why I've just switched over to a hacksaw. Now that I've got all my pieces cut, I just need to sand down the edges a little bit from the saw marks. Before I move on to finishing and painting this project, I want to make sure that these little pieces that I cut out are actually the correct length. And so I'm just going to fit them in here just to see how it looks. Now that I know the pieces fit, I'm going to give them one coat of linen white chalk paint. Moving on to prep the window, I'm putting some painter's tape on the glass because I will be giving this one coat of linen white chalk paint. And the reason I'm doing that is you can see some brown on the edges of the window and I wanna be able to cover that up. And I don't wanna get any extra paint on the glass because I'm usually quite a sloppy painter. Part of my prep is also going to be sanding a little bit of the paint that's kind of chunky on the ends because I don't want that to interfere with the look of the window. I want it to be nice and smooth when I paint over it. Now that the paint is completely dry, it's time to assemble the project. I took some glass cleaner ahead of time and made sure that the glass was nice and clean on the front and the back. And now I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue them in place. I still have the white marks on there from when I used that marker to make sure I would have everything in the correct spot. So that's really going to make it easy for me to find where I need to glue these on. Next, I had to figure out how I was going to duplicate the hinges. So I found this little scrap piece of wood that I had in my stash and it is four inches square. So I'm just marking off two inches so I can draw a nice line through the middle. Then I'm just going to be using this ruler and my craft knife. I'm going to score it a few times on the top and then I'm going to flip it over and score it again and it really easily just snaps in half. I want these pieces of wood to look like real hinges. So what I'm going to do is drill three small holes into them so it looks like there's some screws holding them into the piece of wood. So I'm just marking off where I want to drill in. I've clamped both of the little pieces of wood together so I can drill them at the same time. 
Using this black hammered metal spray paint, I'm going to spray paint both the two little wood pieces and this drawer pull. I've placed the hinges where I want them to be and I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue them into place. I'm using these little upholstery tacks that are sort of a bluish black color and they're a little shiny and I'm just going to use those to fill in the drilled holes and make the hinges look more real. The drawer pull is going to be the handle of the window and I'm going to just use hot glue to put that in place as well. The idea for this Look for Less challenge is to find a home decor item that you would like in your home, but it's probably going to be way over your budget. For example, this is a beautiful pressed lavender frame that's available on Etsy. It's $140. I figured out how to make this same home decor item for $4.25. I'm starting off with some frames from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint it with a few coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint. I'm also using a really soft brush. I don't want any brush strokes on this and these are just some dollar store paint brushes that I picked up a while ago. They work really well, don't give you any brush strokes because if you can believe it, this is a project that I am not going to be distressing. Normally, if you've been watching my videos, I tend to distress everything, but this doesn't need it. So that's why I'm using a softer brush. I'm also going to need to do the inside portion of the frame because you will be able to see that. So this is gonna get a couple of coats as well. While the paint's drying, I'm going to get my blossoms ready. This lavender is a little different than what was in the picture, but it's what I had on hand. I get these at my local Dollarama store for $1.25 a bunch. The stems, I have extra. Those are ones that I keep when I take the blossoms off for different projects. And it's good that I keep them because I need them for this project. I'm just gonna take each of the blossoms and give them their own stem. Next, I'll lay them out and arrange them how I would like them to look, using the picture as inspiration. I'm also going to have to trim some of them because the inspiration piece is a 10 by 13 frame, but I'm using an eight by 10 frame. So there is a, gonna be a little bit of a, of a difference in the size of it, but I'm okay with that because I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. I'm just gonna bunch some together and then I'm going to add a little bit more lavender pieces. I'll be cutting some up and adding them throughout the stems just to make it again, look more like the inspiration piece. Here on my channel, I do a lot of looks for less. I do some farmhouse trash to treasure and thrift store flips. So if you like what you're seeing, I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button and stick around. I've got a couple of these little blossoms left over, so I'm gonna trim them down and then add them to the stems in a random fashion, just to give them a little bit more texture and dimension. I'll just be using my hot glue gun to add these little bits of blossom to the stems. Now that the frames are dry, I'm going to be able to put them together. So the first thing I'm doing is putting the one glass right back inside and I'm just going to hot glue each of the four corners to hold it in place.
now I'll be able to start laying down the stems in a pattern that I like. I kind of had played around with it. You can see to the right here, I have them kind of laid out the way I would like them to be, but I'm just gonna put them in and make sure that they all fit and that it looks the way I want it to. I wanted to add a little bit more color in some of the spots. So I just trimmed down one of these blossoms and I'm just placing little bits and pieces throughout the frame. I'm taking the second piece of glass and putting it in the second frame and I'll hot glue it around the four corners like I did the first time. I had laid the second frame on top of the first one because I was going to glue them together but then I realized that the gap in between the two glass pieces is a little bigger so these blossoms were going to start moving around. So I've gone and added some hot glue to the very bottom just to hold the stems in place. I also needed to add a little bit of hot glue to all those little tiny floater pieces that I have in there. So just a teeny little bit of hot glue will attach it to the glass. The last thing I needed to do to finish this project was just hot glue those two frames together. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like what you saw, I'd love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. Don't forget to hit the like button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. Bye for now.